Hi, everyone. I'm here with Coach Krista. Thanks for being with us, Krista. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Okay, so Krista is our training director at our Fitness for 10 in Sparks, and she's in our studio in Sparks, Nevada right now, the Fitness for 10. If you guys are in the area, stop by and say hi to her and find out about the programs there at Fitness for 10. So now also, Krista lost 100 pounds. So the first question I have for you is, what motivated you? What was that trigger that said, you know, I, I need to change my lifestyle. I, I can't do that. So what triggered you to lose 100 pounds? You know, you hear a lot of times where people have this one aha moment, right? Like you go to the doctor and you get that result or you get on the airplane and you have to get the uh, seatbelt extension. And now you're so embarrassed that this is the moment, right? I would love to tell you that there was one particular moment that finally was like, this has to change. But honestly, it was a collective piece of those types of moments over and over and over again, where my kids were asking me to go play outside. And I'm like, mm, I'm too tired. Like, I'm just going to sit here on the couch or I'd sit down and I'd be like, oh, I forgot something. Can somebody else go get it? And it was just all these moments, small moments that just kept coming together, coming together. And it was like, OK, wait a minute. My answer could be different if I was a little bit different, if I took care of myself a little bit different. And so, like I said, there wasn't just this one particular moment. It was that moment walking down the aisle on the airplane, like bumping into people because I couldn't quite fit. And it was that moment of, oh my gosh, am I gonna get that seatbelt around my waist? Oh my gosh, I don't think so. There was that moment taking the kids on uh, a roller coaster and them going, mm, you can't, you don't fit. And then, so it was just these moments after moments. And finally it was like, I'm missing out on a lot of things. And I'm the one that's standing in the way of those things. So would you say you were always overweight or did you let yourself go and get overweight? So in high school, I was actually um, on the varsity dance team my freshman year. I was always very athletic. Um, actually, that was part of my high school career was training and um, doing all of those things, being very active, running after school. I enjoyed physical fitness. And at one point in my high school career, now you can go ahead and laugh at me, but as a young 17 year old girl, I was like, hmm, I could go be a personal trainer on a cruise ship and I could see the world and stay fit and have fun. And I thought that would be the most amazing thing but life decided, you know, took me on a little different plot course. And then that's when the weight kind of came into play, having children, postpartum depression, all of those things. So no, I was, I was fit years and years and years ago, but then I spent about 20 years being very unhealthy. So slowly, but surely gradually it just came on the weight came on. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Every every kid that I had, there was more weight, you know, you go through relationship issues, you know, as a woman, there's all kinds of fun things to play with at that. And yeah, it just kept creeping on. And again, some of those moments just start piling on as well. Okay, so now we, we got you got to the point to where you've all these little things added up and you you made a decision. So did you just change your lifestyle all at once or what did you do? What did you do to start your weight loss journey? So, and I'm going to be honest, this, this journey didn't happen overnight. It, it started probably about six years because at first it was what I call the Monday mentality. I went through the Monday mentality on Monday. I am going to eat X, Y, Z. On Monday, I'm going to the gym seven days a week, even though I haven't been to the gym in six years. On Monday, I'm going to do this. I call it the Monday mentality because that's what we are kind of conditioned to do, right? We're sitting at home, we're watching those infomercials and you, <laughs> I don't know, you got somebody who's like, oh, I started taking this medication or this pill and I lost this much weight or I bought this program and now I'm working out 12 days a week and you know, there's not 12 days in a week, but I'm doing it. and 
I kept buying into all of these quick fixes, trying to just lose the weight. And it wasn't, that wasn't the problem. It really wasn't the problem. I had to get off the Monday mentality bandwagon and start to look at it as the person I want to become leads this type of a lifestyle. And so it was a gradual shift as far as my identity. It wasn't, I didn't want to identify as this overweight individual anymore. I wanted to identify as a fit, healthy, happy mom, entrepreneur, business person, all these things. So it was a gradual process of what does that look like? So would you say at first you were kind of focused on being task oriented and then you shifted to lifestyle, being a, a different lifestyle? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, and that's why I became a trainer, honestly, is because I started this process. I, I took prescription pills. I did, you know, the, all the diet trends that the drops under the tongue, the keto, like I did all these different things, but I had to learn like who I wanted to be value driven first and foremost, and what that looked like on the external side of things. So it did, it became more of like, what can I do today? And this is what I challenge my clients to do all the time is, okay, so going to the gym, losing the weight is going to make you feel what? Oh, most people say things like, you know, strong fit, you know, sexy, maybe whatever. They come up with a list, right? Okay, so what did you do today to feel strong? What did you do today to feel fit? What did you do today to feel disciplined? And it's those little tiny things that you start working into. And it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I went to the gym and I lifted weights for 14 hours. It means, hey, you know, I picked an apple over the Oreos today. Freaking awesome. And now I have discipline. You know, I'm bringing those attributes into who I am as a person. Okay. So once you figured out that you needed to change your lifestyle choices, what did you actually do? What did you actually change that got you on this weight loss journey? I mean, how did, did you eat differently? Did you exercise differently? What changed in your lifestyle? A lot of things changed in my lifestyle. A lot of environmental factors had to change and shift, um, which is always a hard thing, but it became different little things that tweaks that I could make into my life that were sustainable. Um, because again, we go into this diet mentality or this Monday mentality and it doesn't happen overnight. So like one of my favorite things, I don't own real plates. You know, when you go buy box, you know, your plates, your dishes, and they've got the big, big plates and then you got your little salad plate. I throw those big plates away. Like they are, they are all donated. I don't even own them in my house. All I have are those little salad plates. That's what I eat off of. Because at one point I didn't want to deprive myself of the foods, but I still needed help as far as, okay, what does my portions look like? So it became starting to create habits that were supportive of that. Like I'd come home from work and my kids are coming home. So we'd all sit down and have snack together so I could find out about their day. Well, snack was usually nachos <laughs> or, you know, something of those lines. And so then it became, let's grab an apple. Let's go for a walk. And you can tell me about your day. So it became that process of being mindful of the habits that were going to support me to become the person that I wanted to become. Okay. So I know, so you changed the type of food, like mm -hmm. for a snack, instead of Absolutely. potato chips, it became an apple and with your kids also. Yep. Um, and you, you've talked about portion size. Now I know you still like chocolate, right? Oh, chocolate and coffee. We are never giving those up. We can fight over it. I will box you. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you're, you're finding something that's sustainable for you, yeah. but you still get to enjoy things like chocolate. I'm assuming you don't eat a bucket full of it every day. Um, it's a little nibble probably, right? Right. But, and that's the thing is, I think when you go through this process, you have to find ways that you can still enjoy the foods that you're eating because it is a life. This isn't, I'm never going to eat X, Y, Z again. 
it's maybe there's a substitution I can create. Um, you know, like the, the ice cream, right? The protein ice cream that everybody's been making with the cottage cheese or the Greek yogurt and your protein in there. Like I can sit down and I can have quote unquote ice cream every night now. And I have no guilt, no shame in my game. Cause I know that I'm eating 40 grams of protein and it's actually pretty healthy for me. And, um, it's yummy. <laughs> so yeah, it and is, it's really not ice cream. <laughs> it, it is really not ice cream. Exactly. It's actually just that protein. And so, I think that that was kind of my process too. And I think that that's what I like to coach my clients with as well. And that's why I think to begin with, you start tracking your food. We don't really know what we're consuming. And we talked about this last week, as far as you go and you buy, you know, your sugary drink from your coffee shop, you get your, you know, you get all this food, but two hours later you're hungry because it's not nutrient dense. So you start by tracking that food and you go, okay, what meal can I really work towards? Like kind of cleaning up, maybe changing it up a little bit to where I'm getting better nutrients, where I'm getting that nutritional support, but I'm still feeling good about what I'm eating. And that's kind of where it starts is it's one thing at a time. When you say tracking your food, do you mean counting your calories or just paying attention to what you're eating or are you watching your protein or how strict are you with that? I'm not as strict as I once was with it because it has become a lifestyle for me. But at first, you know, it starts even and I have some of my clients, they'll just write it down in their notes section in their phone because they're not quite at that point where they're like, I got to dial in my macros. So we start. I just want to see what you're eating for seven days. I don't care what it is. Let's just see what you're eating. If you're stopping at that coffee shop every morning, going and getting the sugary drink and all this other stuff, maybe we can kick it down to using non-fat milk or almond milk and sugar-free syrups and start making little shifts like that. And those little things, they add up. It's that whole compound interest effect. It absolutely works. Yeah, they sure, they sure do work. And it's like, it's like almost when you, when you first do that, you want to see... All you want to, it's easier if they're eating all the wrong things and all these bad mm -hmm. foods, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. now if they're eating almost perfectly and they're 75 pounds overweight, you got your work cut out for you. Absolutely. But Absolutely. if they're doing everything wrong, it's much easier to get results with them or with yourself, right? 100%. And that's another thing too, is like, I am, and you may or may not agree with me, but I believe in getting your blood work done every year, like every single year, because that's going to tell us, especially for women, our hormones are crazy and they 100% play a factor in the whole process. So establishing your own personal baseline for that is so important because over the years, we can make sure that your baseline is what's maintained and that there isn't any spikes or things that are contributing to that. Actually, I get my blood work done every two months or every Ooh, one month. Look at you, fancy and, pants. <laughs> well, the, the reason I do that is because I'm an experiment junkie. Yeah. I like to experiment on myself. Yep. I'll take this supplement or I'll cut my carbs to, okay, what, what happens to my blood work in the next month? If I keep my carbs under 50, mm -hmm. what happens if I bump my carbs up, carbs up to 150? Yes. What happens if I do this? What happens if I take this supplement? What's this doing to my liver enzymes? Blah, blah, blah. So, um, I'm a blood work junkie. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Does that surprise you? You didn't know if I would agree with you or not. I don't agree with you. Once a year is not enough. <laughs> I, <laughs> I totally it. disagree with you. But I think you You're right. nuts. You only go once a year. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right. So I'm going to start getting mine done more often because I'm I'm the same way. And that's kind of how I, I came about becoming a trainer was I was like, okay, it's not necessarily move your butt, eat your vegetables, you're going to lose weight. Yes, on a very basic level that works, but there's a lot more to that picture. And so having that blood work also contributes. Again, it's just data. So like you said, you get to be the experiment. And that's how I approached it was, okay, I'm client zero. I am going to try this way. I'm going to try the keto. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And we're going to see how it goes and see how it works and see if this is going to change. And, you know, and I think that everybody needs to be able to do that. They have to understand that what works for me isn't necessarily what's going to work for you. You have to trust the process 
and take that data in. Yeah. And it's like on this platform, I mean, I don't know if I ever told you this, but one thing I did was I did vegan for six weeks okay. and I'm not a vegan, right? but I'm good at being a vegan. I know how to be a vegan. You know, I'm a professional in the fitness industry. I know how to be a vegan way better than most vegans. Right. I was getting 150 grams of protein. I was getting all the essential amino acids, but I know how to buy the right protein powders. I knew how to do it. Yeah. So I did vegan for six weeks, checked my blood work, and my blood work was phenomenal. Um, really? Now, am I a vegan? No, I'm not. Um, but my point is I, I know how to do it because the problem – I know we're getting sidetracked, but we're talking about diet and all that stuff. But the problem with vegan is there's not enough rules. Right. You know, with carnivore, there's one rule. Eat meat. Right. And with that one rule – and that's my blood work is spectacular on carnivore also. But with that one rule, eat meat, you just eliminated all the processed foods. Yep. And my opinion is there's two reasons why carnivore works. You're getting plenty of protein and you're not eating any processed foods. Right. So it works, especially for older people. Now with the vegan, there's not enough rules because the rule for a vegan is – don't eat animal products. Well, that's right. not enough rules. So what does that mean? I can go eat potato chips and candy bars and <laughs> no, you need, if you're going to be a vegan, you need about 25 or 30 more rules to yeah. tack on to just being a vegan because a vegan can eat junk food. Yeah. But I was a healthy vegan for six weeks and my blood work showed it. So I'm a believer in it. And, you know, the whole thing with the vegan is it's the protein and the processed foods. They're not getting enough protein and they're eating processed junk. Yeah, 100%. But you really can't. I have, I have two or three uh, plant-based proteins, mm -hmm. but they have the essential amino acids listed in the back and how much there is of them. Right. So... The problem with vegan is they don't get all the essential amino acids, especially the branch chain amino acids, which are in meat. So my vegan proteins are expensive. Why are they expensive? Because it costs a lot more money to get branch chain aminos, to get leucine, isoleucine, and valine out of plants. Right. So yes, it's you know, 35, 40 bucks for a jug of protein, but that's what you got to do if you're going to be a serious vegan. Otherwise, you're going to be unhealthy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's just like keto. You know, you've got the dirty keto and you got clean keto. Like, I'm sorry, but if I'm going to the gas station and I'm picking up my my lunch and it all comes in bags and is covered in grease and everything else, I just don't know that that's healthy. <laughs> right, right, right. The keto is similar. Yeah. Um, it's a little easier to be strict, but keto yeah. just means a high fat diet. Well, you can't eat garbage fat. Exactly. You know, exactly. You, you, seed oils, you know, those are, that's all fat. Mm -hmm. So you can't eat that stuff if you're doing keto. Now I'm kind of a keto guy. That's where I would kind of peg myself. Yeah. My, I've bumped my calorie, my carbs up a little bit lately. I'd say I'm maybe, you know, under a hundred carbs most days. But before I'd be like under 50 net right. carbs. So right. I'm saying I'm about 100 or less now because I'm eating a, a little more. I'm eating a little more fruit and my body's responding. It's kind of like changing your workout. Your body likes it. Yeah. And so it sounds, Krista, like you've really found a lifestyle and things that are okay to eat in moderation and things that you don't eat. What are some things that you just don't eat? <clears throat> oh, things like you know, I, I'm really bad about fish. I won't, I won't lie. I know I'm missing out on that and I'm sorry. And I fail on that one for sure. Um, as far as even just a healthy food, but even like, you know, I take my kids out and we'll go have pizza or something. I'm still going to have a slice of pizza. Granted, it's probably a half of a slice of a pizza, or I'm going to have the salad with the pizza. Um, because I, I'm a mom first and foremost, and you know, our society food is a big thing, right? Like 
I, yeah. I've been there where, you know, I'm on a diet and I'm like rolling up to a barbecue and I'm like, well, I can't eat anything. And all of a sudden I'm super cranky. It's weird. It's like those snicker bar commercials. <laughs> Right. I'm like, um, I can't eat anything and now I'm grumpy and everything else. And so again, it comes back to, you know, moderation. And even in those types of situations, if I know I'm going somewhere, like it's a birthday party or there's going to be food that's maybe not necessarily supportive of my lifestyle, I will eat maybe more of my protein before I even go to the event. That way I'm fuller. I've kind of reached maybe my goal for my protein for the day because protein is, that's what my whole thing is, is I eat my protein every single day, my 150 grams, no fail. That's, that's it. That is my one hard rule in my life. So if I have an event like that, if I'm going to something like that, I know I'm doing this. I know there's going to be food there. I know I'm going to eat some of it, but if I can set myself up for success beforehand, then I know I'm going to be okay. You know what? That is a great, simple rule. Mm -hmm. Eat 150 grams of protein a day. Yeah. And you don't weigh 150 pounds, but you're eating 150 grams of protein mm -hmm. a day. Mm-hmm. That is key. And I shoot for, I don't weigh 150 pounds either. I weigh more, but I'm shooting for at least 150 grams of protein a day. If you just do that, mm -hmm. you're going to have success yep. because you just, your calories are going to be a lot lower. You're going to get those amino acids that do everything in your body. Mm -hmm. So that's a good, simple rule. Mm -hmm. um, do you have like certain cheat rules, like you're going to cheat on a certain day or uh, you're going to, how do you, do you just know when it's okay to eat this or that? Or do you have strict rules that you still go by? I don't necessarily have strict rules as far as like Saturday's a cheat day, because for me, my change was so much more about the behavioral side of things and the mental shift of things that when I said I can't have, it's like, you know, all of a sudden you go and you're like, I'm going to go buy this car. And you've never seen that type of car very often. Now, all of a sudden you see that car everywhere. It was the same thing for me with food. So if I said, I can't have this, or I have to wait until such and such time, then all of a sudden I just craved it even more. So I still kind of build it into my life of, okay, you know what? If I have, a, if I want a sweet treat, I've got protein yogurt already made in the freezer. It's ready to go. That was kind of the thing for me is I know I have these triggers or inclinations, right? After dinner, you have this hearty dinner and you're like, oh, I need something sweet to wash it down with. So have something sweet on hand that you can eat that's not necessarily going to completely throw you off the train. So it wasn't ever, you know, these specific rules like, okay, you know, 7 p.m., no more eating, you know. I try to stay out of the kitchen after dinner and, you know, wipe it down, shut everything down. But there's no, like, hard, firm things on those because, again, I want to be able to have a life that's not completely revolving around an unhealthy relationship with food because I had already had that unhealthy relationship with food. Hmm. Okay. So to wrap it up, Krista, if you had one paragraph, mm. how would you say in general that you lost a hundred pounds? I lost a hundred pounds by looking at myself as client zero, by taking into consideration things as far as what other people had done to lose a lot of weight. One of the big things that became a habit for me and one that was sustainable for my life, that was the key, is finding sustainable habits within my lifestyle. If you work, you know, overnight shifts, you are probably going to have a different lifestyle than what I have as a mom. So finding sustainable habits that I could change into my life, eating protein, hitting that protein goal every single day, that was the biggest one. And walking, go out and walk 45 minutes a day. It's therapy. It's truly like, I don't know, Steve, I love to get outside. You get that sunshine and everything else. If that's where you start is hitting that protein goal and walking for 45 minutes a day, that's where you start. You trust the process. You're not going to see results overnight. It's going to take time. It is compound interest. 
one shift at a time, one habit at a time, work on changing one thing, focus on it for two weeks, then in another two weeks, add another habit. Don't take things away, add another habit. And over time, you get to where you want to be and then you get to fine tune everything. And that's where it's starting to get really fun. Yeah. And then it'll stay off. And you actually have, you have a coach, you're a coach, but you have a coach, right? Absolutely. 100%. I think that in any industry, anything, right? If you're in business, if you're trying to make money, if you, you know, you always find somebody who's at a different level, the level that you want to be at, and you look to them as a mentor, as a coach, what are they doing so that got them to that next level? And what do I need to do? What do I need to mirror in my life to get me to that level? Okay, so Krista, if people want to follow you on social media, what you're doing, how do they do that? I am on Instagram as at it's Coach Krista. That's the same for my TikTok as well, but yeah, mostly on Instagram. Okay, at it's Coach Krista. And that's uh, Krista, C-H-R-I-S-T-A, for all of you, in case you were wondering. <laughs> all right, Coach, appreciate what you're doing there in our gym, and thanks for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you.